Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at three new things that just got added to Adobe Muse CC for 2014 in the August update. So let's take a look, let's dive right in. As a matter of fact, we're going to do it on my own, one of my own sites. So one of the sites that I built in Muse was um, one for my users group, which is macgroup.org. As a matter of fact, if we head over to the browser, we can actually see the site here. And what I'd love to do is solve a problem that I've had um, with this site since I built it in Muse. And that is one that sometimes we get spam uh, via the contact form. So if we head to the Contact Us page, uh, this is using a standard Muse widget, which is a contact form. So if you wanted to add a contact form, you just go to the widget library, go to Forms, and you can drag out a simple or detailed contact form that we've uh, done here. And what I'd love to do now is solve the problem of uh, spam using CAPTCHA. CAPTCHA is a, is a technique that uh, people, you know, you've been on a web where you enter a form and, and there's a little graphic there and you have to type in what the graphic says. That just proves you're human, not a spam bot, not something that's uh, just adding uh, data to all the forms out there on the web. The problem is the only way to do CAPTCHA in the past with Muse is if the site was hosted with Business Catalyst, which is part of your Creative Cloud uh, subscription. You get to host up to five websites. But this site was never hosted with Business Catalyst. It's hosted on, you know, on a different provider. So now I can just go in and I can uh, edit the form and I can add the, not the Business Catalyst CAPTCHA, but I can add the reCAPTCHA. So when I do that, that will take a second or two, but then it pops up. And then what you do is you just go out and go to Google and get a, you know, register the domain and get a, not register the domain, but add the domain where you get a public and private key. You will need those keys in order for this to work. But once you put, once you paste those keys in, then for this domain, then your uh, site will now work with CAPTCHA. And of course you can change this to whatever you want it to say. So for example, I have it saying, um, uh, actually, I've added in, are you human <laughs> for the description? And of course, we can then make that wider to fit. There we are. So um, that will generate the numbers and the graphics and everything needed. And the person types it in before they can submit the form. So that's the first new feature is that you can now use uh, CAPTCHA, reCAPTCHA on sites that aren't hosted with Adobe. If it's hosted with Adobe, then of course, you already had the Business Catalyst CAPTCHA. Second new feature, let's head over to the join page. And on the join page, um, I've got kind of a mess here. I did these manual bullets way back in the day. So uh, these are just bullets that I just typed in, hit a space, and then uh, typed in the text. And of course, the wrapping doesn't work properly when it wraps around because those aren't real bullets because Muse didn't have real bullets until you guessed it until now. Um, so, if I want to add bullets, I can now just go ahead and highlight this text. And here, let's go ahead and, uh, looks like there's a blank line at the top there. Let's go ahead and take care of that. I can highlight this text and I can go in and just add bullets. Boom, just like that. And there's even a bullets panel that lets you customize it further. As a matter of fact, I do want to customize it further. I want to customize it using a custom bullet, a custom font. Um, and that takes me to the third feature. So we've been able to use our, um, our web safe fonts, the 11 fonts that most people, you know, they use, but don't, you know, don't really care for. Of course, if I use my system fonts, then it's going to export those out as images, which could cause the site to be slower and bigger and so forth and so on. And of course, we've got the beautiful type kit integration uh, using web fonts. Well, now there's a new option based on your feedback. When we go to add type kit fonts, we can add the over 400 fonts available from Typekit as we always did, but now you'll notice there's a new option here at the top, self-hosted web fonts. In other words, people have asked, well, what if I get my fonts from somewhere else? I go buy web fonts or I go find some free web fonts. Can I use those in Muse? And now the answer is yes, because now we allow you to install them and self-host them with your site, wherever your site's being hosted. So we could just go ahead and click uh, add self-hosted fonts and let me explain how this process works. Um, there are three files that Muse is gonna need, the web fonts and an SVG file that you would download with the fonts that you bought or got for free. 
And then you also need the true type or open type or whatever font that's installed in your system. In other words, the font that Muse will, you know, that your the rest of your applications would use. So you need all four of those files in order for this to work. So I'm going to uh, pop out to the finder. And let's go here. And I've got all four versions. I've, I've already installed the true type version. So you need to do that up front. And then we're going to take the other three the EOT, SVG, and web uh, font. And we're just gonna go ahead and drag those in. And it says, okay, I, I see you got three fonts. They're they're legit. Um, by, by clicking this, you confirm that you are licensed to use those fonts. In other words, you didn't steal them. And we're gonna go ahead and continue. Now I'm gonna get an error because this particular font, Mr. Mustache, when I grabbed the true type version of it installed in my system, it didn't install with that name. So Muse is not seeing the system font. And, I, and luckily, it lets me fix it. So I can say fix it, and it says, hey, I don't see Mr. Mustache in your system fonts. Um, where is it? So I can say, if I didn't install it, I'd have to install it now. But I did install it. It's just a different name. Let's go down to the Vs. And it gave me some re really weird name when I install that font. But it is here. Uh, we go down to the Vs, and there it is. That really long, weird font. But that is the font that it needs. So once I say, yep, that's the font I need, and it's now all good, I click OK. I click OK again, and that font is now accessible and ready for me to use. So the way I'm going to use it is, and by the way, you can see it up here. There it is. And the way I'm going to use it is actually in the bullets panel. I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, you know what, these bullets are fine, but I want to add a new character. And when I say new character, I get to pick the font that I want, including my new cool web font that I downloaded. And I can then either just get the bullets from that font. It's already got a couple. Or I can say, no, no, no. Show me the entire font. Let me pick what I want to use. Because I kind of like this as a bullet. So I can go ahead and add that in. And that becomes my new bullet right here. So I can then go in and I can even specify a color for that bullet. So if I wanted those bullets to be in red or a different blue or whatever, those bullets are now there to stand out. So that was combining two features in one, using the new bullets function and using the new um, uh, ability to add your own fonts. And of course, whenever we talk bullets, we can't help but talk um, numbering as well. So let me go to a different one and let's go ahead and do the same thing here. And we'll go ahead and take these out these manual bullets that I did. And if we were to highlight these, uh, not only can you do bullets, but you can also do numbering. So one, two, three, and if I go in and add one in between later, uh, it will of course automatically renumber it as you would expect, as you would expect. Okay, and of course you have your different numbering styles you can choose, and you can do the same thing. You can choose different fonts, sizes, colors, offsets, so forth and so on. And, of course, with the new bullet feature becomes uh, the ability to add a bullet style. So if I go back to that first one and I say, hey, I want to be able to use that bullet throughout my site, so I don't ever have to do this manual again, I can go in here and highlight that and create a new style from it. And we can even rename that style, whatever we want. Um, cool Mr. Mustache <laughs> Bullet. All right, so now when I um, add that as a style, come back and go to my other uh, tab. There we go. And I can say, no, no, no. I don't want those to be numbered. Instead, I want to use my new bullet. And there they are. So that's it for this episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. Three new features in Adobe Muse for the August update. And this is right on the heels of the June update, which was a complete new rewrite of Muse. And it just keeps getting better. We keep adding more things. As a Creative Cloud member, you get the benefits. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.